put 28,000 watts of power into a go-kart and it was amazing, but we couldn't get traction. So we put on bigger knobby tires, still couldn't get traction. So today we're installing snow tracks and skis to see how fast this go-kart can really go. So by the shape of this package, what would you think it is? I was gonna say it looks like a weird like baby alien. I've never seen something this well packaged. Skis. Little skis. Little tiny skis. Little mini They come with skis. spindles that just go straight onto the go-kart. Oh, Actually. that is baller. That is gonna be so cool. Look, they even have little shocks. <laughs> those are the cutest. Those look like RC car shocks. They do. They're actually just stabilizers. It's kind of a weird design. Like nobody does those with real snowmobiles, but I like how China will just make the most random crap. Yeah, what are Like anybody in cool? this country would be like, there's no market for that. China's like, there it is. Sadly, our tracks have not showed up yet, but we have our skis. So I'm gonna just slap these on and see how they look and uh, if I need clearance or anything. I'll be designing something so that the skis don't just flip around when you hit something. That'd be unfortunate. Anytime you went over even the slightest bump. Yup, so look at that. <laughs> she man! That's gonna that look so cool. That is nice, with some tracks in the back. It actually has more ground clearance than I was expecting. It's, it's, yeah. it's probably gonna be and pretty decent. the treads are on, like, Yeah, that will be so cool. should be here anytime now, but while we're waiting on those, I am gonna work on securing this battery because we have been using a ratchet strap and it's just not that premium, you know? I'm gonna put that on my push-up account. The tracks finally showed up. She, that's so premium. Let's hold that up next to this machine over here. Yoink. That's gonna look so most excellent. Awesome. That tread's actually pretty impressive. Yeah, they're snowblower tracks. I am designing something to bolt the tracks to the go-kart right now. And I think it's going really good, actually. I've learned quite a bit on CAD since I did this last time, so. It's going pretty breezy. did some weight reduction on this piece with hexagons. This morning, I helped Will figure out this plan for this. And then uh, once Will made the parts, we were going over it and uh, I realized that my idea was stupid. So I just looked at it quick and I was like, yeah, that'll work. And then went back to my own thing. So the idea was make some plates, adapt them to this and then have it bolt on, but how are you gonna get bolts in there? And then this wouldn't be able to come apart. The plan now is to make an adapter that we take these hubs off and then we take this solid stock, put it in the lathe, turn it down to fit the internal diameter of this axle on one end and the internal diameter of this on the other, on the other end. That's not like the most elegant solution, but we'll just bolt it in. Yeah. Kind of crude, but it's the only way I can really think of to make it all disassemblable without like a whole bunch of extra parts that won't be straight to each other. And then this adapter piece that we're gonna make, we'll just weld it to this here. I 
I went a little too far on the lathe. I kind of zoned out and I was like, well, I'll just do a little more. And uh, it made it too loose. It's crazy how little of a change you can make and just take too much material off. It's a time consuming thing and I don't do very well with things that take a long time. <laughs> so I'm practicing we, patience. We don't call you Patience Willie no, yeah, uh, at all. It's not a virtue <laughs> I really have. It pays to just quadruple check everything. So that's what I'm gonna be doing from now on because this machine takes off more than it looks like it's taking off. It'll take like a little curmudgeon amount and then it's like, you've gone a foot off. It's like, how is that possible? I just took a little tiny bit off, so. They don't call me machinist Willie for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Boring this out, but uh, yeah, the lathe definitely takes some patience. Are you but finding it boring? It can get quite boring. It took a really long time to make, and now I'm gonna put it in something so that you can't see it. Well, the great thing about doing this for YouTube, Will, is that the people see always it. see it. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Because we show it to them before we hide it away. You guys are the only people who get to see this. Just gonna go in here like that. Oh. Like, go in there like that. And then it's gonna go in there like that. And we'll do it. And we'll be swindling around the snow in no time. I used up all of the solid bar that I've been cutting this stuff out with. Now we gotta go look for some more in the snow. It's gotta be in the snow around here somewhere. Because this is the shock pile Ethan was talking about, so. It's gotta be nearby there then, I, I think. Hey. I remember seeing stuff like this. Gotcha. time to see if all my turning has come to an end or if well I'm still gonna have to work on this one but I'm just really hoping that it just works out and fits in here because the last one and then the last one before that last one was wrong so okay um yeah that's much better Phew. I don't know what Will was talking about but that's pretty much just as loose it, as the last one it has to be better than the last one it has to be. The last one had plenty. How have you not learned this yet, Will? I don't know. I measured so many times. I told I you, just like actually check times. the part. Don't yeah. trust your calipers. It's so easy. Uh, well, no. the next one would be the fourth drive. Yeah, yeah but wow. one, of one, them of, one out of the three has worked. Yeah, pretty soon you're going to have as many tries as there are Fast and Furious <laughs> yeah. But I will never use it when on my When he thought own. he had it perfect, he was talking a lot of game. <laughs> And then when it didn't fit, he was like, never again. <laughs> never again, dude. Now I just need Ethan to weld this, because... Yeah. I don't well, trust myself around bearings. Like, I'm definitely gonna melt that. And Ethan's finished up That on thing about project. patience we were talking about with the lathe? Yeah. I don't have it. <laughs> not, I'll melt that, I just know I will, and then we'll be in a bad predicament. We've been getting all sorts of shop upgrades lately. And we just got another very exciting one. This is the Anchor Solix F3800 portable power station. And it's a battery bank that's capable of powering pretty much the entire shop. This transfer switch thing that we need to get wired in. But that combo allows it to uh, not just power individual items, but actually power the lights and outlets in the shop. It's a beast and consequently, it has a nice little handle so you can roll it around. So that thing's got way too much power to just be carrying it. So if I gotta move this thing out of the way. The kernel.
almost sounds so mean. It really does. And now we have two KTM V twins running in the same building. Man, the wheels on this are nice. Yeah, I think it rolls around really good. Yeah. You can just plug it in once the transfer switch gets installed and uh, power the shop! transfer switch installed here and all of these breakers here are about enough to run pretty much everything in the shop. We've got this big old plug and we just slap that into the transfer switch and then plug this into the anchor here and then oh, oh, hey look at that we're 100% back. Power that on and so currently main breaker all the power is coming from the wall so we'll simulate a power outage here which we have a lot now everything in the whole shop is off and all of these switches here allow you to transfer it so when they're down it's all running through this breaker panel and then when you switch it up it's running off of that so i don't remember exactly which one of these is which but Start flipping them on. There we go. That's the one that's got the microwave on it because it beeped. There's those lights. There's the other lights. And then these two are the 220 circuits around the wall. So all of the outlets are currently powered. It, it even, check this out, runs the elevator. that I turned the main breaker off right now. Like it doesn't, you would never know. If the power had gone out, everything's just working as normal. Thanks to the Anchor Solix 3800. What a machine! We actually get a lot of power outages out here because uh, well, we're out in the middle of nowhere, and pretty much all the power lines are overhead power lines, and there's a ton of trees. We're always trying to film, and so having a loud generator running in here would really not be an option. And also, you'd have to have the generator outside because of fumes. This thing is silent. I mean, it's currently powering the whole shop and making zero noise. And we don't have to search around for random gas. Exactly. We're constantly always out of gas. <laughs> We're really bad at remembering to get gas. So even if we had a generator that ran on gas, we'd probably not have the gas to run it. And also then you'd have to, you know, is the carburetor clean? There's all sorts of annoying things with gas generators. But this thing, you can just have it in your house, keep your refrigerator powered while the power is out so your food doesn't go bad or keep your whole house powered even. This thing is a long lasting powerhouse designed for 10 years of everyday use. This thing has a massive 6,000 watt output, 120 or 240 volt AC to power absolutely anything. It's also got three USB-C ports, two regular USB ports, all of the 120 AC plugs right there. So this thing has multiple charge methods. You've got your 1800 watt wall plug, just charge it from the wall in 2.4 hours. Or if you have the 2400 watt solar panel set up, it'll charge in just 1.8 hours. And with either method, it'll charge up to 80% within an hour. With the Solix F3800 portable power station, you can add up to six extra battery packs to expand its capacity up to 26,880 watt hours. Enough to power your home for about a week. Check this out. We can even use this thing to charge this big old battery for the electric go-kart for, so we can take it for a test drive. We can crank this thing all the way up, charge it at maximum of 14 amps. And the anchor says, no problem. We'll do that while running all the lights in the shop. Now, let's see if this thing can run the welder. I've got it plugged in, running those circuits that are all of the two 240 volt plugs in the shop. There we go. Okay. 
no problem. Man, welding off the power of a battery. That's pretty impressive. The Anchor 3800 is a super easy solution for charging EVs. There's no grounding equipment, nothing of that required. You could just plug right into it. Right now this is on 240, charging up 45 amps. Bam. And it's really nice having backup power when you drive an EV. I drove this car for two years, every day. And there were so many days if we had any kind of power outage or if the flipped a breaker at my house at night, then the car wouldn't charge. And it's not like, oh yeah, you could just go buy a couple gallons of gas. No, <laughs> you gotta sit there and charge the thing. And if you can't drive it to a charger, then you're screwed. It's time to revolutionize charging with the Anchor Solix F3800 home power system. So use promo code MARCHF3800HPP to get 22% off single unit or bundles. So click the link below to check out all of Anchor's products and get your discount. Twenty shells up, and there's tracks on this machine. He's gonna be very excited. Just a little. Whoa! This is awesome looking. Nice. A lot of ground clearance for uh, for snow driving. Yeah, no. It's gonna be more like it's interesting snow to me that skinny. These skis are a little bent right here, so I'm just gonna cut it right there, adjust the angle so that they're a little more flat because this will be fine, but it's not gonna be that hard and it'll make it a lot more premium. It needs to go a little bit more, I think. Um, I don't know, we'll use math or measurement tools. Hmm. I those. I like this. What we want is for this to be 90 degrees from that. That's 88. Okay, so I've shortened these skis and I've gotten them straightened out because before they were stanced out a little bit. Hopefully it gets a little colder in the next couple of days though because I have a feeling this is not a slush machine. <laughs> not the most premium welds on here, but they're strong. So they're long style welds, strong Ooh. style welds. <laughs> they're not even that strong to be honest. Mm. Oh, they're strong enough, but your so. your statement of log style welds or strong style welds is not accurate. Oh no. <laughs> well, it'll certainly hold up. It will hold up. That will anyway. The rest yeah. of this, uh, who knows? Yeah, I don't really know if anything else is gonna hold up. I'm really curious about these tracks though, cause that's a lot of power to put in those little skinny boys. Take a one inch piece of tube, stick it in there like that, drill a hole right here, and I'm gonna put this bolt in there so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I'm gonna put a piece of chain through here, put a bolt through it, and go over to here. Cause if I don't have this situation going on, these treads are just gonna go upside down and that is not what we want. We're gonna do a quick shakedown on the driveway and then we'll take this thing to a real snowmobile trail where we've actually got snow instead of all this mud. Ah! 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 
Yeah, I was a little concerned when he just gave it the beans. Yeah. <laughs> I heard Sounds an, like he broke it. I heard an oh no. Well, Man, I, I really wanted to drive this one before you guys broke it, but... But I heard seemed, the oh no too. That seemed unlikely from the get-go. I think that Will has a different definition of shakedown than most people. <laughs> Will's like full throttle until it breaks. Let's see how much of an oh no we're looking at here. We need to tighten up the tracks a little bit. Right around there, my track just like flew off. But it's fixable, which is good. We gotta get some tools out here and just. Do that. You'll need to be online. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Siri, we told you to stop listening to our shenanigans. <laughs> no good can come from it. Oh yeah. Yeah, this thing absolutely rips. <laughs> like actually, it grabs so hard in this stuff. Nice. But. The gearing seems in a good position. Yeah, it is. And that was on the baby mode. That was? Yeah, that wasn't even the full speed or power. Wow. I was just giving it half the beans and in baby mode, and it was doing that. This thing rips around. Live long and prosper, boys. Uh, we'll be right back with some big, heavy tools. Hey, that's, okay. a, that's a nice golf cart. Keep up the good work. Yeah. <laughs> World record machine right here. World's nice. fastest track machine. Right? Track machine. Could you right. imagine? That'd be such a sick record to beat. I wonder what it is. It's probably held by that weird military track machine. Oh, that rips off. Right. Right. Well, that should be good enough. I bet you our boost of snow bike can go faster than it rips off. Yeah, I'm true. Oh, do you have the 19? Yeah. What did you find? There's dog poop in the track, man. Man, what a day to wear gloves, right. man. We gotta lift up a little higher. I don't think they were even tight from the factory. I just, I got fully yoinked. <laughs> going fast. When I built this thing, there was actually snow in true grind hard style. We got a little too busy on other projects and the snow has completely deleted itself. As you can see, this winter, we didn't have a lot of hard packed snow up here and this thing just never got to be used correctly. So we're gonna use it incorrectly and see, see how she rips. on dirt. <laughs> it's so bouncy. There's no suspension. <laughs> you still got a little snow and it's early in the morning. So I think this thing's actually going to rip because the last time we drove this was in the slush and the mud. And uh, it was kind of miserable. But now we've got some sun. It's beautiful outside. You're going to come down this hill? Yeah, we got to make it down this hill to get to any snow so i think this is the best option 
it's gonna be a bumpy ride, but it's gonna be premium. How was the hill? Uh, it was great. This thing actually worked pretty well, but I don't know if you guys can see, we just lost both tracks. Uh, and the GoPro fell off. Oh. <laughs> this happened last time, but I think it happens even more because, you know, going on the dirt. This is a problem. These little cheap, I don't know what these are, Timu tracks. They don't hold up very well to the power. So um, I'm gonna pop this assembly off really quick and tighten the track down and see if we can't get it to hold up for a couple of runs. All right, I think that's as tight as she'll go. I think we're just gonna send her. Oh, it popped off. <laughs> Maybe we just don't try to back up. We just broke the tensioner bolt. So I'm gonna, we have another set of these. I'm just gonna go grab this piece, put it back together. And then hopefully we have enough tension to put some power down. Man, I'm getting kind of hot. Yeah, it's hot out right now. Our snow is rapidly getting soft. Yeah, it is. Looks like it's staying together so far. Woo! <laughs> That's fun! I kind of figured this might happen again. That was scary. I thought we were going upside down for a second there. The tracks are really cheap and they're not meant to go this fast. So when you turn, they just kind of fly off. Or if you're going in reverse, the tracks like pull in like this and pop off. But uh, other than that, I think we do a couple modifications to the, to the track system and it actually probably hold up pretty well. This little machine is incredibly fun with the tracks and the skis on the front. It was fun as a go-kart too, but it's really very versatile in this setup. And I'm glad we got to try it out, even though there's not a lot of snow around here. <laughs>